Welcome to the Rusted Garden. Today I'm going to talk about two sprays you can use in your garden to help manage pests and disease. We're going to talk about creating an aspirin spray for your tomato plants and how to use baking soda in your garden. Let's start with the baking soda. Baking soda works extremely well in preventing fungal diseases from getting on your plants. And you can use this across different plants. It will really manage different fungal diseases. And the whole key to understanding how to use baking soda is prevention. You put this into a gallon of water. We'll go over the formula in a second, how we mix it. But you spray about two weeks ahead of time. Keep track of when diseases show up in your garden and start spraying preventatively with baking soda. What baking soda does is it raises the pH on your plant leaves and when you raise the pH it makes it harder for the funguses, the spores, the fungi spores to get on the leaves, establish and colonize. So it's really nice at preventing the different fungi from coming to your gardens. It does not work against viruses. Okay, So baking soda will increase the pH level on the leaf. If you don't want to use baking soda, you could use a product called wettable sulfur. And what wettable sulfur does is it decreases the pH level on the plant leaves, makes it more acidic. And you may want to use that on more acid loving plants. That's up to you. I've used both over the years. Baking soda seems to do fine. What you want to do is make sure you don't overdo it. So the basic formula is and I recommend you make all of your sprays in a one gallon container and then you can pour them into a half gallon sprayer. This is a two gallon sprayer. This way you're not having to, you know, split up the doses and make a mistake if you're going from the basic one gallon formula to half a gallon to two gallons, you know, do it however you want. But the safest way is just to make it in a one gallon milk container. So baking soda, you can use one to two tablespoons. Let's make sure I got tablespoons. of baking soda. And if you get a, a piece of, well, we can just do this. This is for the aspirin. But if you just tilt this like that and dump it in, you can make a little funnel and it'll go right in. So that's one tablespoon. And when would you use two tablespoons? So this is a general statement. When your temperatures are 80 degrees and lower, your plant leaves can take more. You can put in sometimes more oil sprays, more baking soda sprays because it's cool. The leaves are fully inflated, so to speak. They are strong. When you get to the warmer weather, 85 and above, sometimes the leaves release and they're kind of wimpy looking. When they're kind of dealing with the heat and you hit them with a coat of oil, baking soda, other sprays, it can damage the leaves. So temperature does make a difference. So when it's 80 degrees or left, less, you may be able to go with two tablespoons of baking soda. As it gets warmer, you want to go to one tablespoon of baking soda. And just because I'm showing you a recipe that works for me doesn't mean it will work for you. Most likely it will, but I always recommend anytime you make a new spray, Go and test spray your different plants. You don't want to go out and say, hey, Gary says you can do this. You hit your entire garden with two tablespoons of baking soda. Some of your plants get damaged. All right. So you can also then add in, you don't have to. Some people just do baking soda and water. In this case, we're going to add a little bit of soap. This is a half, well, let's go with a teaspoon of soap. Soap varies. You want to get a soap that has the least amounts of detergents and fragrances and colors in there. And what the soap does in this case is it just helps, whoop, let's get the lid on, shake it up. It just helps the baking soda stick to the leaf. We're not using the soap like when we do an, e a neem oil spray. We need enough soap so that when you shake this, the oil disperses through here. When you're using baking soda, you're not worried about the baking soda and water mixing. You're just adding a little bit of soap so it sticks to your plant leaves. So baking soda, again, helps 
prevent fungus, fungi from getting onto your plant leaves, and it can also treat that. This is great for powdery mildew, the different diseases, the different fungus that come and get on your cucumber leaves, squash, zucchini, tomato leaves, pepper leaves, um, your Swiss chard. So you can use this on a lot of different plants. Just test spray it. Now, how often do you use it? Every seven to 14 days. If you get no rain whatsoever, you can go a little bit longer. If you're getting a lot of rain, go around seven days. But what you're trying to do is keep the spray on the leaves, you know, at the least potent level, one to two tablespoons, don't go beyond that, so that the pH level of the leaf is higher and the different fungi can't attach to your leaf. And that's a great way to prevent it. If you're going to say you're treating powdery mildew on say your cucumber plants or your squash or zucchini plants, you may want to spray um, every three or four days. Just hit the outbreak, see how it does three or four days later, hit it again. And you want to keep in mind the temperatures. As it gets hotter, you have to cut your sprays back. If I were going to say um, treat a breakout of powdery mildew on my plants, I would probably go with one tablespoon, hit it, because three days later I'm going to hit it again, you know, and you just don't want to overdo it. But you'll, you'll get a sense of what works in your garden. So that's the best way to use the baking soda spray. Again, it raises the pH. If you don't want to use baking soda, you can go with a wettable sulfur. That lowers the pH on the leaf, and they both work to stop the fungi from establishing or growing on your plant leaves. Now this trick is what I call the aspirin trick, and it really works, and I've done several videos on it. It only works for tomato plants. Um, you can try it on other plants related to the tomato family, like um, I think eggplant, peppers, um, potatoes, well not peppers, but um, potatoes, and it may have some benefit, but I have not seen it work. I've only seen it really work with tomato plants. So when a tomato plant gets attacked by pests or disease, the SAR response is triggered. It's called the systemic acquired resistance. S systemic acquired resistance. And you can look that up. I encourage you to go online, look up SAR in tomatoes, systemic acquired resistance. Um, check out tomatoes in aspirin and just read about it. But you're going to see some interesting studies that really do work. So what happens is when your plant is attacked by pests, by disease, it triggers its own SAR response, systemic acquired resistance, and it begins fighting off the disease. Unfortunately, at that point, the fungus, the virus, the diseases are already established. Now, this doesn't work as well, I think, against viruses as it does against the different fungi and different pests. So what does that mean? So the plant naturally releases a hormone, salicylic acid, it fights off pests and disease as best, as best as it can, but usually it's too late. By using aspirin, acetyl salicylic acid, it's the salicylic part of the aspirin, you can trick your plant into thinking all this hormone's being released because it's being attacked. And I've used this year after year, and you really notice results. So you're spraying your plant with an aspirin spray, tricking it into thinking it's being attacked, it beefs up its defense system, and when that fungus comes, it's facing a tougher, thicker leaf it can't establish. And that's basically how it works. Now, formula-wise, let's pretend this is clear water, that we don't have anything in it. It's one to two aspirins, a 325 milligram aspirin that's not coated. You want this to dissolve completely. So I use two aspirin in a gallon of water. Of course, if you're allergic to aspirin or you have anybody in your family allergic to aspirin, don't be uh, spraying aspirin in your garden. Put the aspirin in. You can also put in a teaspoon of soap in there. That will help the aspirin stick to the leaves, but it's not that important because it can go on the leaves, it can wash into the root system. It's just getting the uh, acetylsalic, yeah, salicylic acid onto your tomato plant. So we would wait till this aspirin is totally dissolved. You could pour it right from the gallon into a container like this. Um, I'm going to do a whole rusted garden show on sprayers and tomatoes and show you the spraying, but you just basically go out, 
spray down the tomatoes all over real quick. If you want, you can drench the soil for about two seconds. That will get the SAR response going. How often do you do this? Again, every seven to 14 days, just depending on what comes into your area and how often you want to do it. What you will notice is thicker um, green leaves. They get a little bit darker and they get thicker. And I recommend do half your plants with the aspirin. See what you notice and see if you like it. But this is again a great way to build up to really start the the response of the plants to stop diseases before they show up. And I would again start spraying this really a month before some of the diseases come into your area. Prevention is really the key. By the time you see the diseases on your plants, it's not really too late, but they're going to take a lot of damage. You start using your sprays early before the diseases show up. You'll have healthier plants and you can let them, if you can't, sometimes you can't always cure them, but you can keep them hanging on and growing for the entire season. This way you get more production. Hope you enjoyed the video. It's a lot of information, but the keys are when it's hotter, your plants can't take sprays that maybe they were able to take when it was 70 degrees. So you have to learn how to adjust them. One to two tablespoons of baking soda, one to two aspirins is perfectly fine. Test spray before you cover any of your garden with sprays that you learn from the internet or from YouTube. All right, please check out my website at www.therustedgarden.com. Thanks for watching.